Welcome everybody to a new show and today we have the British man in Shanghai, Daniel Bateman, not Batman, and Daniel, Daniel <laughs> is the founder of BritBrit, he's a content creator, a KOL influencer, and a really good friend. With Daniel we always have so much fun, so thank you so much for making the time, you have just come back to China, and how are you today? Really well, yeah, I had a month in the UK. And it was good to re-energize, reflect, and come back to China fit and ready. Beautiful. He even dressed up for us. Like, he's always wearing the nicest suits ever. So if anybody needs some good suits in China, ask him. And even a beautiful tie and pocket square. It's quite wacky, but I also like, uh, it's, it's, it's my personality. You know, very um, out there, very spontaneous and... Uh, very stylish. Talking about your personality, what I really love about Danny is you're always so positive. No matter where I meet you, at what time, uh, whether we have a phone call, a WeChat message, at an event, you're always so positive. And not only this, but also so energetic. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not 100% of the time. There are times, of course, we have ups and downs, um, but we have one life, right? So why waste it? being angry, being sad, being frustrated. There are times when, of course, I want to be down and react in a way that isn't the best way mm -hmm. and react in a negative way or pessimistic way. But tomorrow's a new day. And also in a stressful situation, the worst way to deal with it is to get more stressed. It's happening. Yes. You just need to deal with it and know that you will find a solution. Like you've gone through decades of getting through hardships and issues before mm -hmm. and you're where you are today mm. now there is another thing that i think um is very special about you i'm not saying other people are not supportive but with you like at every event what daniel's always saying is guys if there is an event that you really like or from somebody you like this person share it on your wechat moments on your social media send it to your friends invite other people it's a win-win situation. You always say this, but so genuinely. And a lot of people, they like our events, but they just don't share it. So what is behind of you and what do you love to support and constantly try to give so much support and love to so many people? Um, I, you know, the meaning of life, I think, is to help people. I really think that is the true meaning of life. Mm -hmm. And um, because you know, with happiness as well, I think, the most happiness you would get is reactions from other people. Mm -hmm. It's when people are laughing or smiling. And I think that's one, one thing. The going back to the events and, and getting people to come along, it's, it's challenging. It is challenging. Yes. But I've always said this in events, like you invite two, three of your friends, you double, you triple the audience of any event, whether it be an offline event, a webinar. So it's about value exchange. It's about bringing people together. I think mm -hmm. we all need this. And you learn so much from other people. Yeah. And a lot of people are lost right now. And I would say going to events is the best way to find what you want to do or mm -hmm. networking or business because you will meet people that will give you ideas. Mm -hmm. And there could be a business relationship there. There could be a friendship there. Mm -hmm. We are friends now because we met at an event. Yeah. So it's a... It's an important thing to do within your network. It's not just sharing stuff on social media and giving it a plug that way, but tell your friends, I went to this great event last night, come along to the next one and be accountable, come along. That's always a big one. So I like to see that kind of conversion. Everybody talks about business conversion, mm. uh, KPIs, and mm. that's a really great one is managing to get people to events and idols and things and, and getting them to actually connect and, your value. As I love to say, it takes one person, one life, and one opportunity to change what sorry, one person, one deal, and one opportunity to change your life completely. Actually, mm -hmm. it's said by my coach JT mm -hmm. Fox. Now let's talk about your amazing story. I know you had like a life uh, before of what you're doing and how did it happen that suddenly you became a content creator, an entrepreneur, a KOL even mm -hmm. in all the way like China? The roots go back to school. So when I was at school, I was always really interested in drama. And I had an option, probably when I was around 13 or 14, to go into drama and become mm -hmm. an actor. 
mm-hmm. actually Ben Wishaw, who played Q in James Bond, mm-hmm. very famous actor. Mm-hmm. He went to my school. So my, oh. my high school is very famous for drama and sports. So there was an option to go into drama. And I was always very confident in school. Ironically, I was confident with drama, but I wasn't confident with people. Which is ironic in itself. You seem like a people person. Well, now I am, <laughs> but back then, I was somewhat of a um, library geek. I was always studying away. But when I was in situations, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. maybe but, uh, you repeat this. Okay, when I was in situations where I had to be theatrical or be confident, the school play or singing, mm-hmm. I would come alive, and. That was always inside me and mm-hmm. i think i went to university i studied law and deep down inside i wasn't satisfied it wasn't my true the buzzword passion mm-hmm. came to china and i could see that there was a lot of foreigners that i think it's a lot easier to build a social media presence here and get quote unquote famous here mm-hmm. than it is in the west i think my content doesn't work in the uk unless it's a chinese audience yes um but I think there's a bigger opportunity to get bigger on social media, especially for foreigners in China. Because Chinese love foreigners, right? <laughs> I think there's We're just, just standing a, out. Yeah, right? I, I think there's, you know, a very welcoming kind of atmosphere. They want to learn, they mm-hmm. want to expand the horizons. So I was living with a a content creator. And mm-hmm. I also had a job that enabled me to do YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. So that was a nice gateway in. And the content creator, who used to be big, now not so big, and mm-hmm. this is a good life lesson about content creation, is make sure you stay relevant and make sure you stay legitimate, is I would see this guy filming every day or every week. I think, I can do a better job than that. And I can give a lot more value and do it in a way that's more me. Mm. And one day, to turn a negative into a positive, he actually, I was asking him for some advice. I was thinking, I, I'd love to do what you do. And, and he just said, you'll never be able to do what I do. Ooh, was that like a motivation, but like from a negative perspective? Yeah. And, and it really motivated you? And, and he was threatened. You know, there was jealousy wow. there. Whereas with my friends, if any of my friends came to me and said, look, I want to do more, but, you know, more content creation. I'd say, go ahead, do it. Do it. Uh, if you need any support, I'm there for you. Not the opposite, so you'll never be able to do it. That's very common of what people do. There's jealousy immediately, and they would think, oh, no, don't open this business. You're not going to be mm. successful. I feel like also a lot between women, mm. there is a lot of jealousy, but in general, instead of people supporting each other, which is a pity. Yeah, and, and actually relating it to gender, maybe there was a alpha male kind of dominance thing there, not from mm. my side, but certainly from this particular individual. And anyway, I, I took that inspiration, thought, well, I'm gonna do it because in life, whenever I've been told I can't do something, I'm just gonna do it. So- Gotta prove you wrong. Prove it. So when that special period happened a few years ago, that was a time when people were just on their phones and they still are to this day, just swiping yeah. away. And I just started producing content. It took me a while to find my voice and I was pretty much posting every day. And then after about three months, One video just blew up on Little Red Book, which is the Instagram of China now. Mm -hmm. And it just flew from there. And then I got partnership deals coming in, companies paying me to to make videos for them. And Mm -hmm. and then I identified, wow, there's a business in as well. Wow. Oh, I just noted down so many things. Okay. Um, Let's go back. Like, how did you find your voice or how can other people find their voice? Really great question. So you guys are taking notes. Yeah, it it comes with firstly starting. So there's two ways to do this. You you can plan and think, right, I'm going to make this video and do this. Mm -hmm. But videos in your voice. I would actually say my videos. If you watch my videos on Chinese social media, it's not the way I am now. The way I am now is me. This is Daniel, Daniel Bateman, um, you know, with my true hat on. My videos... and. on Chinese social media is more theatrical. It's more yeah, yeah, very funny. It's very, <laughs> how to sound more British. And oh, yeah, yeah, you sound very British. Very British. The cliche, stereotype British. Yeah, where there's now quite standard accent. I'm not like, oh, I see, it's really good. <laughs> but finding your voice is is a great, finding your voice is a great 
question because it should be you. You should be the person in the video. Okay? Mm, so the authentic you. The, the authentic you. you. The great thing about making content in your voice is you can't be penalized for copying. So a big issue across social media is people copying each other's content. Well, if you right. create content from your brain that nobody has ever seen before, then I think that's that has some impact. That has some 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 punching power to it. And creating content that is what you're interested in. So I had an interest, you know, I'm British. I had an interest in being that bridge between the UK and China. Mm -hmm. Although I've got clients in Germany actually now, and um, we'll, we will discuss that. Um, but creating content that is related to your passion, I think, mm -hmm. is, is quite key because you'll enjoy it. But isn't there like a controversy, like you're saying, find your voice, be the real authentic you. But then I feel like if we look at TikTok and Douyin and Little Red, but what seems to be working best are these like 15 second videos where you are somehow like being funny or you're being stupid or you're actually a different character or you're like doing a dance or you're moving around. It's actually, you're not just like the real you. You're somehow like, yeah, playing theater, isn't it? Exactly. So <laughs> I would actually yeah, could I backtrack what I said. Uh, so that is a great, great um, topic to explore. People want to be entertained, I feel like. Yeah, so I use the phrase edutainment. Which edutainment, is, I like this. Which is educating, education, and entertainment. So entertainment. Combining yeah. those two. Yeah, it's a bit silly. It's a bit... But if you look at anyone on TV shows, movies, are they being the real, the real selves? Comedians as well, are they? Um, so you could do videos. I could do videos that are a bit more serious, um, which I have. So I have branched off, obviously, with the Panda Profits podcast, which I'm, I'm going to plug. Um, but also, you can do both. So mm -hmm. I think maybe more on the Western platforms, you could be a bit more serious. But in China, you probably do have to have a little bit of flamboyancy or um, extravagance about your... Although your videos, I've seen your videos, it's you, it's your voice. And you're talking in a, in a way that you would speak to your clients or your audience. So I think it's... Um, I think to get big quickly in China... Yeah, what's big, your advice here? how to go viral, how to get big quickly on social media. Yeah, so number one is producing content that no one has ever seen before. Mm. You can go down the trends route, which is things like, right now there's a big Chinese show that's really popular called Fanghua. Mm -hmm. It's about Shanghai in the 1990s and a guy getting rich through stocks and shares. So you could talk about content on that. Succession is big right now. They're winning all the awards. Um, you know, go the Golden Globes and all these awards. So you can you can pick trends. I tend to not do that. I tend mm -hmm. to find one video and then continue on that formula. To get big, um, it really, you've got to be patient as well. A lot of people, oh, I want to get big really quickly. I've been doing this for four years. Oh, wow. This gives me some hope. Thank right. you. Patience is not yeah. my, my strength. I, I've been doing this for four years and you you have to be aware of that. People want to get big really quickly yeah. because of the stimulus that we have nowadays. And they also give up very fast if they don't. Yeah, and, and in the early days, a, a big reason I think why my channel blew up was I had a really good support system of friends, family, network that were willing to support mm. the channel. And it was a really good way for me actually to screen people because I realized, okay, are you really my friend? Are you watching my content and sharing it? And So it's, it's a good process to you know rely on your current network like with any business with creating content or starts a bit it, that really the you have that support system already mm. so share it with them and then do it that way um time is a big issue i think with creating content and creating something that is a minute long mm. keeps it really short and, and snappy and it's a good skill for you when you're speaking with clients or or like the pitch, basically. The, the pitch. Get to the point. Be very direct. The pitch. And and pick it, picking topics, I think, I'll, I'll give the audience some really easy topics that they can explore. Right now is, is personality traits. 
Mm. Are you an I or an E? Yeah, yeah. You do content on that right now. That's relevant for forever. Right? What? Who are we as individuals? MBTI. And yeah, all that, all those kind of topics will, will work in the West. It will work in, in China. Maybe I should talk about my saboteurs again. I've been giving MBTI trainings for more than five years, but shifted to Global Disc. Thanks for the idea, Daniel. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll take credit for that as well. You do. <laughs> I'll mention your name. Inspired by KOL Daniel Baker. Yeah, but I think actually you right now, your your persona as a as a coach, I think that is is being motivational is something that people really need right now, and that kind of content goes down really well mm. i think in, in in china especially the motivational quotes that people want that little sound bite every day that they're flicking through and oh, i like that like and or comment and so content that is based on empowerment in a you know in a positive um self-enriching -en way Thanks for the for the tip. Seems like I'm getting like private coaching you at the same time. Now, um, let's go to the next question. Is there something personal that you can share with us? Because Daniel actually invited us to his home. He even pulled up some of his, he's very proud of those, some of his <laughs> fans work that he got. So all of these beautiful artistic um well, it's not just pictures, but this artwork was given to you by your fans, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for showing. I hope everybody sees it. It's always Daniel, right? You can see it. Now, is there something else that you can show us or you can share with us that you haven't shared with anybody yet? I've actually just started learning the guitar again. So I started learning when I was a teenager and I've got back into it and it's been great. So I got this as a Christmas present. And yeah, it's, it was less than a thousand RMB, which is great. You know, it's really quite well priced. And what I like about the guitar is adding hobbies in your life actually creates you, it, it makes you a better time management, right? Your time mm. management skills actually, because I have to set aside an hour a day. And this is something I, I don't share with people is the hobbies that I have. So every day I play the guitar, mm -hmm. I study at least 30 minutes of Chinese and at least 30 minutes of Spanish. Oh, why Spanish? Uh, I have a dream eventually to travel around South America and I'd like That's to go amazing. there with some foundation. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I also do boxing. So I haven't got the boxing gloves with me, but um, I've seen those. Yeah, you've seen the boxing gloves. Uh, so again, boxing, because I really enjoy it, it's great fitness, it adds discipline. It's actually a lot of mental power, you mm -hmm. know, how, where to throw a punch and how to move. Um, so Hobbies are really important in your life and people lose that. I think they, they just work, 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 work. And having that set time every day to do the things that you want to do. I also go to the gym. I stretch every day as well. I stretch at least an hour a day. Wow. Um, I don't do meditation, but I guess during that stretching time, it's some form of it's meditation. It's mindfulness that you're practicing. Correct. Um, Being here and now and you're also breathing. Yeah, I do yoga twice a week. So I have a, a yoga teacher actually comes to my apartment. Um, so yeah i try to that, that is something that i don't usually share is actually my hobbies because people do think i just work 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 and it's important to also um fit time in for hobbies because it will add balance in your life and it will it's it's ways to deal with um loneliness it's ways to deal with um sad times it's, it's ways to deal with those those down day, those days that we all have every now and again where oh this is not going well <laughs> or, or this yeah. is just this is just a terrible day and pull out the guitar, pull out, uh, do a bit of yoga, um, whatever your hobbies are. Should I tell you something else? A little Ooh, secret about please. Me? I like to sing. You like to sing? Can so, we hear it? Um, <laughs> I don't know what you want me to hear. I want to hear, but um, I'm a, I grew up on a lot of 70, 60s, 70s, 80s music, long mm -hmm. car journeys with my, my parents. Did so. you have like long hair too? And then you were I like... did go through a bit of a rocker phase, yeah. Okay, I, 16, I can see 17. that. <laughs> um, but I I do find that actually singing is, for me, is a, a form of therapy, like a therapeutic thing. I um, feel you. And it's actually, which some people just go, so how can you sing and work at the same time? Or how can you... Um, washing up is a great one. I, I like to wash up and then... Can you sing. come to my home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
any any time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm into that kind of thing. So, um, it it really um, it's good for memory as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm able to just recite lyrics from songs because I grew up. With them, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I learned English. I learned English really in the age of you know two, three, or four. By Wait, but is the English your native tongue? It is, but. I vividly remember being two, three, four, being in the car with my parents, and I would say, what does that line mean? Or oh, what does that line mean? What is that? Because a lot of it is nuance. A lot of it is reading between the lines, mm. um, especially with love songs sometimes. So, And then my parents would tell me the meaning behind the song. So that is something that not a lot of people know about. I'm really into music and really into uh, hobbies. I didn't know. So in my eyes, um, seeing you, meeting you so often, I think you're extremely successful. You're definitely a very successful foreigner in China. What would you say makes you more successful than other people? I think I work harder. <laughs> Not to be arrogant, but I work a lot harder and, and manage my time really, really well. I mean, it seems like you have tons of hobbies like we just heard. Yeah. So instead of saying like you work harder, because I mean, in China, we have like the, well, now it's illegal, the 996 working culture, mm. right? So I think the definition of working harder, maybe you work smarter, smarter yeah, that's instead right. of harder, I would yeah. say, because a lot of people work nonstop day yeah. and night here. Yeah. So not working longer. Like I'm not, I mean, I can work longer than other people, but, um, I'm not a big, I'll work all night on a project mm -hmm. a lot. You know, I've, I've done it from time to time, but working smarter is is definitely one way of being able to fit in these hobbies, fit in seeing your friends, going to all the networking events mm -hmm. I go to um, and having that me time as well. So I think mm -hmm. that that's quite... Like the balance. Yeah, and I'm able to switch off in Shanghai. I'm able to switch off um FOMO which was a big thing a few years ago with me like fear of missing out and yeah. oh, there's this event happening or this that's I think true I know it you've got to be able to especially in Shanghai to, to switch that off mm. or and, to learn how to focus more probably yeah focus more and identify which of the where do you want to utilize your time and actually mm -hmm. this is something I'm quite envious of you because quite consistently I see um I, I we did an event a few a few months ago we used mm -hmm. we both spoke at it yeah. But after the event, you were working. <laughs> so oh, the after, same night, yeah. after the networking, I was just going to go home. Like it was ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night. I thought, oh, I'll just go home. I had coaching with um, one of the big four companies in France, a seven-week uh, positive intelligence coaching program. Because it was France, it was a different mm. time zone. Yeah. So no excuses. Yeah, and that that was quite inspiring to see that because I, I I did make me feel a bit bad I walked away I was like no she's working right now and I've just you know we've both spoken at an event and you're still working away so I think that's that's quite key as well that um that, that there has been somewhat of a I'd say a lag um you know I manage quite a lot of interns and I think that that kind of um environment has changed in the last 10 years last 10 years in ten, which way please well, elaborate well, 10 years ago as an intern i was the first one to arrive last one to leave i mm. wanted to set that the impression. work culture you the mean. work culture. the work attitude yeah it was not having expectations working to set a great impression with your boss with the yeah. opportunity that maybe at the end they might offer you a job yeah, or they yeah. Might. so i think that's been lost slightly um, and that is interesting because here in China, we actually have a huge unemployment rate mm. of students. Mm. They're not even publishing the number anymore, but one of the last ones was like 24% or so. Yeah. You think that this is only in Shanghai like this? And if we look at, I think the work attitude in Shenzhen, Guangzhou is way better, in my opinion, compared mm. to Shanghai. Or do you think if we look at second tier cities that this could be different compared to Shanghai? I think it's a world thing. I mean, I had um, interns from all over the world. Mm. and Like I a fit... generational thing? Yeah, I think generational rather than country specific. Mm. Um, however, however... I've said this to all of my interns that you, you work above and beyond for the next three months. I will offer you a job. That's what I always say to them. But very few of them have actually gone 
gone over, you know, go, gone really? over. Yeah, oh, that gone had over directly the communicated. Make to it very people. clear from the start, because um, I've had interns that I actually ended up hiring. So I try and set that precedent from. So I'm even, you know, hand holding and saying. So um, going above and beyond is really a great. Um, mantra, I think, for anyone mm, with any with any and beyond. with any client is mm -hmm. this is your KPI. If your KPI is nine, you should be hitting ten or eleven. Mm. So and, going beyond, and, be above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that may mean you know putting in some extra hours or um, you know I, I know in particular let's let's use the example of interns usually they can only work three or four hours what's to stop you work an extra hour or two just to yeah. get something done i might have a good intern for you if you're still hiring i'm always looking for talent I'm oh always. i'm always looking for fresh talent that's i might have a few though yeah yeah brilliant cool with really good soft skills from mm. jeng jo hunan and they're happy to come to shanghai excellent Excellent. Yeah, I think that's yeah. um, it's key. Like you can see, a lot of them are eager to learn, but there's also with a lot of interns. I would say, they they they're gunning for that. Oh, can you get that? I want that reference letter at the end of the internship. Mm -hmm. and that should be the goal. The goal. Yeah, should yeah, be yeah. The, the certificate, the reference. Yeah, letter, the, the goal, in every program. The goal should be you might be offered a job out of this. Mm. right that should that should be or or you may create a business like a new business within that that role so i think that's always something to, to bear in mind is you, you've got to work hard now i think you've actually got to work even harder because with the people that are that are starting to wane you, know, you want to be the one that's, that's working hard yeah very good advice now i have a couple more questions here for you what is the life or business advice you would you wish somebody would have given you earlier start earlier start earlier i wish i'd start <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean i was always entrepreneurial as a kid i was always um i'll give you a great example is you know pokemon Oh yeah, of Those course. Those Pokemon cards. Uh -huh. I I wouldn't be the one trading them. But I'd, I'd be selling. Them. Oh. So even from the age of six or seven, I was always entrepreneurial, mowing lawns or cutting the grass and carol singing at Christmas to get a, a mm -hmm. bit of money here and there. My biggest regret is not starting more business businesses when I was at university. Mm -hmm. You had so much free time. Yeah, that's true. Um. Also, alongside full-time job i i still think there are pockets of time when you have a full-time job where you could be creating businesses it goes back to time management as you yeah. said yeah um whether it be waking up an hour earlier or um i mean i look back in my 20s there was that period between let's say 9 30 and 11 11 30 those mm -hmm. two hours every night were wasted yeah, you know, most people are some... on social media. Yeah, or going out. I mean, I'm, 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 I have no issue with people going to a bar, going to a club, letting you, you know, paint the town red. Um, but in my early twenties, there was probably a lot of time wasted doing those kind of activities. I never signed million dollar deals in a club, right? Yeah. Um, so I think had I been creating businesses and, and partnering, I think that's another great bit of advice: is you, you can't do it alone. You need to have mm, really good partners, you need to have partners and people that are trusted and, and really do your vetting. You know, the, the, the worst thing is to get into a business or get into a venture with someone. And a few months down the line, they're not fully committed. You're either in or you're out. And this is what I say to a lot of clients in China. It's like, well, China, you're either in or you're out. And it may be rocky the first year, mm -hmm. but after three, four, five years, you may find some success and some, mm. some footing. So that's my best advice is start now, mm. start early. Don't see it as, I'm th the worst thing I ever hear is I'm thinking about doing this, right? We hear this all the time. I'm thinking yeah. about doing this and you don't actually do it. Yeah. So just start doing it. Like with this venture, I think it's absolutely fantastic that you're producing content and think about it. No one's ever seen this ever. No yeah. one has ever seen this Definitely conversation. Definitely unique. Yeah, it's never been said. Before. I mean, same with you. Out of nowhere, you started with the Panda Profits, which is amazing, guys. You should check it out on YouTube. Panda Profits, right? Panda Profits Podcast. Yeah, yeah Panda Profits Podcast. Super interesting content to learn more about doing business in China. 
Daniel and his partner Simon interviewed some of the top foreigners mm -hmm. in China. And China is still full of potential, I would say. Yeah. Including yourself. We have you Thank coming you. up on the podcast as well. So yeah. I'm really happy about it. Me too. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm a coach. And coaches love to ask questions. Mm -hmm. What do you think is a powerful question that people should ask themselves? Um, I mean, we've got to be a little bit yeah, professional in here yeah. too, right? <laughs> uh, um, are you satisfied? Ooh, are you satisfied? So that's our homework for today. Are you satisfied with your life? Mm. What if I say no? Okay, so what are you not satisfied with? Mm. That's what I would ask. Is so your... now I have an answer. So then what's coming next? Yeah. Well, is it your health? Is it your business? Is it your work is it your relationships and then we break that down even more i think with most people it's probably down to sleep and health right i think everybody we could always improve our diet always improve our sleep yeah. um so that would be my first point of call i would say sleep is i think I, you told me that one as well didn't you? the first one not talk about my my, my thing uh, i gotta go daniel is <laughs> is the first one which is really easy to sort out is sleep and then everything should flow from there. So I think that's a, a great question to ask. And I ask myself that question every day. Am I, am I satisfied with the way things are going, whether it be health, business? Uh, I don't want to go to the gym today. No, you're going to go. So No um, excuses. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a great uh, question to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you satisfied? The, the other side to that is, are you ever truly going to be satisfied, right? That's mm. a, it gets a bit more deep then. However, um, I think if you're improving year on year in yourself and with your business or mm -hmm. with your work and the relationships around you, then, then something's going right. Mm. I love that. Well, it was just two days ago. I also was like talking, as we say in German, a little bit vishy washy, mm -hmm. meaning like, yeah, I wanted, yeah, yeah, exactly. You got me. Yeah. And then like I was talking to our common friend, Alicia, and you know what she did? She kicked my butt. He said two or three like sharp sentences. Yeah. I absolutely needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we have really good friends mm -hmm. who sometimes can tell us the truth straight in our face. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it hurts in that moment, or we have our coaches and mentors. Yeah. And this was the most powerful um, motivation, like you mentioned, hearing that flatmate uh, say that you cannot do it and you can definitely not create content mm. better than I do, motivated you so well. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, we've got one life, right? So make the most of it. But the yeah. question I would ask you right, right now, Janine, is are you satisfied? Mm. Now that I've already um, uh, had like one second of, of thinking, it's probably not a full yes, yeah. right? I'm working on a couple of things and um, I just worked through the Wheel of Life or through my book, Be the Coach of Your Life, where I analyzed every part, like as you said, wealth, career, social life, um, your environment, um, your... Uh, did I mention finances, your health, and so on? And then what we love to do is, um, it's also about comparison. You can give yourself a number from 1 to 10, how satisfied are you? Mm -hmm. And of course, if there is not a 10, then it means you want to tackle it. Mm -hmm. So I just did this in my workshop on Sunday with um, some of my clients. I did it for myself too. We created some goals and habits out of that. So there's definitely a few um, construction areas mm -hmm. where I myself am working with or on now. So um, ask me again in a couple more weeks, <laughs> work in progress, but it's not that I can mm. complain. It's like complaining on a high level, right? Sure, sure. Because we live the lives that we created and we chose to live. Exactly. And I think that that's another great point is, is cutting down the complaining. We are very lucky yeah. to be living in this time. Um, if you're in China, I think you're very lucky as well, especially in Shanghai, the opportunities that were afforded, the convenience. Um, I've just been back to the UK and it's, it's nice, but it's not, wow. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's the feeling that you have here. And I was, when I'm in the UK, I'm yearning to get back to China. So, um, no, be, be grateful. I think that's, yeah. the, that's, that's great for what you have and, and build on that. Now, now we're wrapping up and I'd love you to tell all of us, number one, what's the kind of support you would like to have? 
because we're happy to support an amazing person like you. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, what kind of people should start following your your um, social media challenges or what kind of companies should reach out to you that where you can really bring um, big value to them? Because mm -hmm. I also know you have foreign companies that contact you to work with them. Yeah, so firstly for support, I would say this podcast, right? This, the, what, we, what we're creating right now, like, like it right now, okay, share it, um, put it out there, share it on your LinkedIn or whatever social media platform and say, look, I've got a lot out of this. Um, tell your friends, tell your family, um, <laughs> you know, everyone you meet. Okay, so this particular episode would be great. Um, with my social media, yeah, it's always great to have more fans. So I've got at by the hand, B A I D E H A N. Um, Panda Profits Podcast. This is something that we're, we're growing, particularly the YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I think from an offline perspective, I'd love to see more people. I don't know, a lot of your audience, they're in Shanghai, they're in China. There are times when this is a bed tonight. Should I go along to it? Just mm -hmm. go along. Go along. But like one conversation. One conversation might change your life. If you really can't go along to it, I would say start plugging events. Like start putting events on your WeChat moments or on your LinkedIn. It just takes that one eyeball to see it and then have, has that mushrooming effect. Mm -hmm. uh, always looking to connect with companies that are outside of China, looking to grow in China, set up their social media, all that kind of stuff. But really, I think both yourself and and uh, and, and I are, are we're bridges, right? We're mm -hmm. bridges between yeah. the West and China, and I think um, that's just something to bear in mind. You know, you've got great resources here. You, know, you talk a lot about being resourceful, <laughs> which um, has really been empowering for me and create a lot of impact. That is something that we really want to bring, and um, and just just share the love. You know, share the share the positivity. I think that's the most important thing. I'm the kind of person that if someone shares this with me or someone contacts me and says, Daniel, can you give this a plug? I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to do it. Especially you, you've been someone that's been so inspiring and so empowering on that sense to take my content and share out to your network. And you don't have to. You are very, very busy, right? But you've, you've still had that time to just sit down for less than five minutes a day and, and give something a plug and you don't know how much impact that has mm. so i you know that's a key takeaway from today is really take this content and share it it takes a lot of time effort planning to to make this and start creating your own content as well i think we're all mini kols we're all mini influencers and and you know, it just takes that one person to see this and then for, for them to change their life or yes. take some inspiration. Um, and that's why we do it. Awesome. Thank you so much for inviting us to your beautiful home. It's a very private space, especially for us Germans. It takes a lot of time till we invite anybody in our homes. So I really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time. Guys, please start following Daniel's uh, social media and especially the YouTube Panda Profits podcast. And I had a blast and I see you guys for the next episode. Have a good day.